Good to see you. Will you all join me with an applause and let's welcome all of our spiritual family watching online. God bless you all. I wanna start out today by celebrating and giving thanks. And I wanna first of all give thanks for our awesome volunteers. I wanna give thanks for those in the parking lot, at the doors, in the lobby with the children, in the booth behind a camera in Video Village, those who volunteer, our volunteers on the worship team. And hey, didn't our worship team take us into the presence of God today? Let's give an applause and a thank you to everybody who wears an orange lanyard. I love you guys, you're my heroes. And uh, th this, this could not happen. What happens at High Ridge cannot happen without the faithfulness of volunteers, so thank you all. And then secondly, I wanna give thanks for those of you that brought friends and family members with you to church last Sunday for child dedications. So there were lots of family members and lots of friends that came, and here's where we can celebrate. 20 people prayed last Sunday to have their sins forgiven. Come on, can somebody, can somebody give thanks with me for that? That's just absolutely awesome. And then I wanna let you know about an opportunity coming up on Monday night, um, uh, June 13th, which is a week from tomorrow, and it'll be an interest meeting for all of you who have interest in going to Israel. Now, you don't have to make any down payments or anything at this meeting, it's strictly informational. We're gonna let you know where we're going, when we're going, the dates, the time, the, the finances, and what we'll be doing while we're there, and just give you all the information you need so that you can make a decision on if you're gonna go to Israel with us in 2023, March of 2023. All right, everybody, grab something to jot some notes down with, and we're gonna start out in Psalm 103, if you wanna get your Bible ready or bring it up on the app. We're gonna start talking about today, the title of the series is Ascent. Ascent, we're gonna start talking about worship. I believe that our culture is more ripe for revival now than it's ever been. The craziness going on in our world right now. What, what an opportunity for the people of God to rise up and to declare the goodness of God, to give him glory and to let our lives be lives of worship, lifestyle of worship. It's one of our core values as a church. We're worshipers. We believe worship is a lifestyle based on a faith-filled relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know, you know, things are crazy in our world right now. Just all, all of the turmoil in our world, both, both domestic and internationally. And I believe God wants to make a difference. People are distracted now more than ever before. Distractions are at an all-time high. As a matter of fact, did you know that the number one field, or, or quickly becoming the number one field of medical practice, has to do with posture? The correction of posture. It's called kyphosis. Why? because so many people are spending their life hours a day like this. I've got a phone in my hand. <laughs> and you can see my posture. And, and so what's happening is, is people's posture is changing and, and that, that, that breaking down into the, into the chest cavity is causing lots of health difficulties. And so I'm just saying we're distracted. Would you all agree? We're distracted like never before, and I believe the condition of our world and the distractions in our hand and all around us are keeping us from a vital and active, life-giving relationship with our God. And I just wanna sound a call today, a clarion call that it's time for revival, that it's time for there to be a rebirth of passion in the house of God, with the people of God, to worship God. And I just wanna stir you up just wanna help you and give you information on the importance of worship in your life. My burden is, is that you will see over these next weeks, the summer of 2022, will be a time that you will see and recognize that your worship will make an impact in the world. Make a dif will make a difference, <clears throat> excuse me, will make a difference in the world. I got a frog jumping around in my throat today. All right, so. Let me answer some questions. We're gonna answer four questions today. I love answering questions, and the first one is this, why worship? Pastor Jeff, why do I need to worship? Why does it need to be a part of my lifestyle? Well, we're gonna take a look at a guy who was a worshiper. As a matter of fact, he, he wrote a book called The Book of Songs. We know it as The Book of Psalms, because you see, a psalm is really a song. And uh, the scripture is full uh, of of examples of the importance of singing and the, and the importance of having songs in your mind. And I would tell you songs in your mind that take you to the Lord, that take you to the presence of the Lord. Now, King David wrote Psalm 103, and I believe if he were here today, he would walk around singing something like, I can't hold back my praise. 
I got to let it out. I can't hold back my praise. Oh, let's try that again. I can't hold back my praise. Much better. I heard you online as well. Good job. I just believe he modeled a lifestyle of worship, and I believe that we should have it as our lifestyle as well. Three words that we see in the scripture for songs or for worshiping with music. Psalm, which is a numbered and corded song. We would call them choruses today. A hymn, which are songs that have verses, which, by the way, existed way before the Reformation, way before what we would call the hymns of the 300, 200 year ago time period. A hymn is any song that has verses. Matter of fact, many of the Psalms have chords and music and are numbered, but they also have verses. And so it's just important to recognize this. And then the third category of singing, of worship with our voice, is the Spirit song, which was introduced at, at, at the time of the birth of the early church, the first church, when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And then they began singing a new song. And this is what is happening around our world, has been for many, many years now, where, where the Lord births a song in someone, it's anointed, and then it comes out to all the rest of us, and then it changes our lives, like our God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven above with wisdom, power, and might. Our God is an awesome God. That would be what I would call a spirit song. It was birthed in someone's spirit, and then it came out to all the rest of us to stir our spirit, like it just did, to magnify and exalt the one who is worthy of our praise. And so it's very important that you understand this. So let's go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, once again, a Psalm of David, a song that David wrote, and let's just see what he's writing about, what he's talking about. Here we go. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and somebody say the next word. All that is within me, bless his holy name. So in other words, here's what David is doing. He is saying, he is saying to himself, and he's talking, he's talking to the, the indwelling spirit and telling the indwelling spirit and, and talking to himself to bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Now, what is your soul? Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It's what you would know as your personality. It's the way you think and why you think the way you think. It's the way you make decisions and why you make decisions the way you do. And it's the way you respond to things emotionally and why you respond emotionally in that way. That's your soul. That's how you become known. And so what David is doing right here is he is placing the presence of God, he is placing worship in a place greater than just his soul. He's telling himself to give praise to God. And I'm looking on the faces of people today that you've never done that before. You've never told yourself to straighten up. You've never told yourself to, to think the right way about God. You, you need to develop the practice of saying, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In verse two, it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So the phrase bless the Lord means to praise and exalt and worship God. Specifically means to express adoration to God. And that expression, that word adoration is to express with your voice, with your body, with your hands. It's, it's the way that you express and show that you love God. It takes on action. It takes on volume. And that's all we're wanting to encourage in this series is to encourage you to become a 24-7, 365, 168 hours a week available to be a worshiper of Almighty God. Anybody available for that today? To be an available worshiper for God at all times and all places. See, worshiping the Lord is done by speaking and demonstrating your love for God. I don't know if you know this or not. Worship is not a spectator sport. Let me try that again. Worship is not a spectator sport. When it comes time to worship, you're not in the grandstand. You're not sitting in the bleachers. When it comes time to worship, you're not on the sideline. If you're a Christ follower and you know him in your heart and you've given him your life, you are to be an active participant on the playing field of life, magnifying and worshiping your God. It's not a spectator sport. It's a participatory action between image creation, you and me, and the creator of the heavens and the earth. It's something we step into and something we engage in. And then it says there's benefits to it. 
I'm gonna give you those in just a second. But that word benefit right there in Psalm 103 verse two means that there are advantages. There are advantages to being a worshiper. You see, very simply this, when the praise goes up, the benefits come down. Every time you lift your voice in prayer, every time you choose to sing a song that's got, that, that's got a place, a hook in your mind, and, and, and it's playing in your mind once again, and you choose to just go ahead and sing along with it, every time that happens, that exchange goes up to God, and he turns right around and he pours out blessings and pours out, he pours out strength into your life. Why? Because he loves it when his people worship him. He absolutely loves it. Not for his sake, but for your sake. Because of the difference that it makes in your life. And so we just wanna encourage you and to help you to recognize the importance of you choosing to be a worshiper of God. So here's the second question today, is what are the benefits of praising God? So the first one is what, what is worship? And I just answer it, worship very simply is you connecting with God. That's worship, when you connect with God. And the benefits, now the second question, are this. Let's look at verse three. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. How many are in the house today? How many online? You're so glad you're not gonna spend eternity in the devil's hell. Come on, just let me see a hand right here. I am so thankful for that. And if you have any question in your mind, I wanna help you in just a moment, not have any questions any longer. To meet Jesus in your heart, it will change your life, and he, he loves you and wants to forgive your sins. Heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, there's lots of effort going on in our world right now to look youthful, to look young. And, um, you know, there are many, many things being done, especially to the face. But I've got good news for you as a Christ follower. Worshiping God will make you look younger than anything else can possibly do it. Worshiping God renews your youth. So let's go through these. First of all, forgiveness comes. Forgiveness comes. What's this talking about? It's talking about in the moment when you begin to worship God, you begin to lift your voice, you use your hands to magnify, exalt, and adore the Lord God. At that moment, quite often what happens, and I wanna help you to understand this moment so that you don't miss it anymore. What happens at that moment is you become aware of something that you said or did that was wrong. There's a, uh, anybody ever had that besides me? You begin to worship God and there's a, oh, just a, uh-oh moment. And then it comes to mind what you saw, what you said, when you stomped your foot and cursed, when you went ahead and poured the next drink and then you went past the line and the foolishness that followed. And sometimes in the place of worship, while you're blessing the Lord, Sometimes those come to mind, and it happened for some of you today as we were worshiping. The question is, is what are we to do in that moment? Now, here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you to quit in that moment. He wants you to listen to the lies and the condemnation that he's always trying to throw into your mind. Oh, you messed up. You're unworthy. Did it again, you're hopeless. You're not gonna make it, so don't even try. You're worthless, you're hopeless. You're just a walking failure. You can't overcome that stronghold. You can't get past that habit. And I'm here to tell you, God never condemns you. He never condemns you. He never speaks down to you. God always draws you. He always calls you to himself. He always said you might have messed up, but you're not a mess. You might have made a mistake, but you're not a mistake. He, he always draws you to want to help you to get those things made right. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord and forget not his benefits. Who forgives? Who forgives? He has forgiven your sins. He is forgiving your sins. He will forgive your sins. Don't let the place of worship be a place where the enemy gets victory in your life. Get rid of the condemnation. Somebody say amen. amen. And receive the blessed conviction, the conviction that God gives. And that's that moment when you realize the wrong, but you don't get caught in the downward spiral. You choose to turn to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for making me aware of that. 
yes, I, I repent of that, I turn away from that, I'm not gonna do that again, and thank you, Lord, that I get to stay in your presence right now. I have done this right over here thousands of times before. So let me just put you at ease if you think you're the only one that has stuff pop in your mind when it comes time to worship. No, rejoice that he has forgiven, is forgiving, and will forgive your sins if you'll just repent and confess and turn away. He forgives. You see, sin is like a sneeze. It feels good at first, but then there's a mess to clean up. <clears throat> so he forgives our sins, our iniquity. Next, he heals us. Here's what I've discovered. A mind set on God is a healthy mind, and healing begins in your soul, in your mind, will, and emotions. This is what kept me alive when I was teetering between life and death in the, in the summer, spring and summer of 2018. Complications from surgery, I was put on life support. Uh, the nephrologist, kidney doctor, said I was within six hours of congestive heart failure and death. And what kept me going was worshiping and praising my God. I did not understand, I didn't ask why. I didn't like where I was, but I didn't fall into a pity party. I just chose to make this determination. If I'm gonna go out right now, right here, I'm going out, magnifying and exalting my Lord. The enemy is not gonna gain any victories right here, right now. And I just want you to know that I believe part of the reason why I was healed, of course, the excellence of medical practitioners, of course, beyond all things, the effective prayer of faithful, righteous people. But I believe that having my mind fixed upon the Lord and the renewing that took place in my mind helped me to be healed. I believe it's a benefit of worship. Uh, redemption is next. Redeem people, people that know that they're forgiven, have an inside track with God. Don't live in condemnation and fear. And then it says a crown. Very simply, when you praise the Lord and magnify the Lord, it makes your life glow. When you choose to live without praise, when you choose to live disconnected from God, there, the glow begins to go down. The glow of the spirit in your life goes down. Proverbs chapter 17 speaks about the spirit of the man as the lamp of the Lord. Question is, is how bright is your lamp burning? How bright is the Holy Spirit alive and burning in your, in your body and in your mind? When you worship, it causes, it causes a flame to flame up and it causes there to be a crown or a glow about your life. You're satisfied. Praising God helps you to understand what's really important and get your mind off of what's not. It's easy to be satisfied when you recognize the goodness of God. And then it says, and then there's renewal, which means that, that you understand every time you praise God, he makes you new again when you enter into worship. See, worship doesn't satisfy your hunger for God. It just whets your appetite for more. And I pray that today, after the, the set that we had, doing a little different, we're gonna do a little different all summer long. But I pray that your appetite was, was satisfied to agree, but I pray that it stirred up a hunger for more. That you, that you wanna worship the Lord every place you go. I pray that it causes you to desire more. Let's go back to Psalm 103, and let's finish out this passage. Psalm 103, bless the Lord. Now I want you to notice the five, all designated by personal pronoun, the five, the five that worship, the five, um, well, let's just read it. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of, the, of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all of his works in all places of his dominion. And then look at this, bless the Lord, what's it say? Oh, my soul. Hey, listen, bless the angels as they praise God, but they're not doing it for me. Bless all of the hosts and all the ministers and servants in the unseen realm. Bless them as they praise and magnify my God, but that's not me. Bless the Lord all of his works. The Bible tells us that when the birds sing, that's praise to God. When the wind blows and the leaves clap their hands, you can read about this, that's praise to God. But that's still not me. I'm thankful for it. Thankful for the angels. I'm thankful for the hosts and all the ministers in the unseen realm. I'm thankful that all of creation praises the Lord. But what I'm really thankful for is that I get to use my voice, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And you get to use yours as well. Thankful that worship is going around all the time. But I'm thankful that I get to do it myself. How about you? I'm thankful that his praise is in my heart, that my mind can go to him, and that my mind can be changed every time I choose to praise the Lord. 
So the question is, for those of you that would say this is not the way you're living right now, what happened? What changed? I was praying about this and it made me think back to Dawn and, and my re- dating relationship. So over the course of the four years that we dated off and on, and by the way, I was the problem. She was not the problem. She knew God had spoken to her. She was peaceful and sweet and kind. I was still a knucklehead off the charts. I still said stupid stuff, did stupid stuff. I still got my feelings hurt really easily. And so different times I would pull back from the relationship. And I didn't know, I just didn't know what to do with what was going on and what I felt. I wasn't mature enough in God to be able to do well with it. I'd lived many years in sin. And so I would pull back and inevitably we would have a DTR. Anybody know what a DTR is? Define the relationship. And inevitably it would happen something like this. Jeff, what's going on? What, what's happening? What, what's going on with you? And then I would realize we're gonna have one of those talks. And it's because of my issues and because of the craziness in my mind and she's gonna get hurt by it, uh, but I didn't know what to do. And so you might understand pulling back from a situation you don't know what to do. But because the grace of, the God, was, the grace of God was on her, she would, she would help me have a DTR. We would have a define the relationship conversation. And inevitably, ultimately, the Lord spoke to me and told me to quit, to quit being such a knothead that he had given me my perfect helpmate, my, my life partner, and to then begin to live the way that she had been living all those four years. And the DTRs, for the most part, <laughs> don't happen that much anymore. <clears throat> the point is this. Some of you need to have a DTR with the Lord. The Lord's calling out your name. What happened? Where'd you go? Why'd you go? What's going on? He is like Don in the illustration. He ain't gone anywhere. He feels the same. He still loves. He's just wondering where you've gone. What happened with you? Why is it that the blessing of the Lord from your soul isn't happening? because he knows it's for your good if it does happen. He knows that the abundant life that deep down you wanna live can't happen if you don't define the relationship and get back connected to your God. Defining the relationship helps you to know where you are with the Lord. Some today need to make a recommitment. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's time. Enough is enough. It's time to recommit. It's time to lay down those things that happened. It's time to to stop wondering about what happened. It's time to lay it all down. It hasn't brought you life yet and it won't bring you life today and tomorrow. It's time to stop and to make a recommitment to have a renewal come from your spirit to his. It's time for you to lay the flesh down. I'm not saying that you need to get rid of your phone. I'm just saying the distractions of life need to become secondary to the greatness and the goodness of your God who loves you more than any other. It just needs to be that all the stuff in the way, all the stuff causing the distance in the relationship need to be removed by you. You need to be the one doing that because God hasn't gone anywhere. See, worship is the intentional attitudes and actions of focusing on God. It's you intentionally focusing on God. So you gotta make a choice. And for some today is gonna be a DTR day. Matter of fact, we're gonna worship again in just a minute. And I would encourage you as we worship, you have that connection. You have that connection, get strong and reconnect with God. You define the relationship by saying, Lord, I'm back. The best that I've been is not the best that I'm gonna be. I have been a good worshiper, but I'm here to tell you it's gonna take off like never before. And you have that moment today. All right, let's go on. I wanna show you out of Psalm 50 why we were created. Psalm 150, praise the Lord, it says. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Now that that literally means up in the air. I know some of you really begin to pray and praise the Lord when the plane's about to take off. But it needs to be that we're that way all the time. Praise him for his mighty deeds, for what he does. Praise him according to his excellent greatness for who he is. 
praise him with trumpet sound. And here we see hands, voice, and body expressions of praise and, and of worship. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with, somebody say that, that word right there. Somebody say it again. Now some people think we're too loud in here, but let me just tell you, we are below the decimal range that will cause you to lose your hearing. But we are right below that level. Listen, I, I don't know about you, but I used to listen to my music loud. I wanted to feel the bass line. Anybody, anybody I, I want to feel it. And uh, anyway, so we're close to that, and it's my fault. It's my fault. So if you're unhappy with the volume, um, write it down on a voter chad and put it in the, in the box. For those of you that don't know, a voter chad, we used to have to punch when we voted. It was a little teeny tiny punch about the end of a ballpoint pen and a little piece of paper would fall off the punch of the paper with a ballpoint pen and that was a voter chat. So write your complaints on those. <laughs> Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Do you have breath? Yes. Oh, some of you aren't convinced. As long as you are breathing, it should be that you look forward to the next moment to praise the Lord. It should be that you are engaging and excited for every opportunity to praise the Lord. Now, I just wanna, just wanna clarify some things with you. We follow the leadership on the platform here at High Ridge Church. Worship is one of our values. We follow the Holy Spirit as he has already spoken to those who are on the platform leading us. Now, this, in years past, kind of became crazy. Listen, I've seen some crazy stuff in church life. And it used to be that this was interpreted, praise God in his sanctuary, Psalm 151, and then all the stuff that followed in the mighty heavens, mighty deeds, trumpets, lutes, harps, tambourines, dance, strings, pipe, sounding cymbals, clashing cymbals, were all supposed to happen in the sanctuary. Everybody look at me. You're now the sanctuary of God. Now, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, the, the location and residence of God changed. It was no longer in the temple, in a synagogue, or in a sanctuary. It was no longer behind a curtain in a box that contained the, the Ark of the Covenant that contained the Ten Commandments. No, now the presence of God is in you. You're the house of God. You're the sanctuary. Now, part of the reason why we designed this room and built it the way we did, well, we were, we were very, very lean financially, one of the reasons, but we didn't spend all the money on sanctuary type adornments just because we wanna make the point, you are the sanctuary of God. You're the house of God. It's within you that the presence of God dwells. Not that those things aren't awesome. I actually like the, the communion table. I actually like crosses. But we have chosen to have this room be simple so that every time you come in, you come in recognizing I'm a child of God. I'm a temple and I'm a place of the presence of God. And I get to join with others just like me and together we get to make a glorious sound to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I'll tell you one funny story. So I'll be telling stories throughout this of stuff that has happened in church when, when I was one of the pastors of the church. Not the pastor, but one of the pastors. So. Back in the day, when things were getting really exciting in worship, when worship was kind of breaking out, kind of moving away from holding a book in your hands to, to using your hands to worship the Lord and watching the words on a screen, tambourines became really popular. <laughs> Some of you older folks are already chuckling because you know exactly where I'm going with this. Became really popular, and we had a lot of people in our church that went out and bought tambourines. And then it became a competition of how big the tambourine was, how long the streamers were that were tied to the tambourine. Anybody remember what I'm talking about? Come on, some white heads and bald heads, wave at me here. And um, well, so one Sunday, we invite my mom and dad to come down to visit. And they're with us. And my mom and dad, at that time, were in a traditional church background, jacket, suit, tie every Sunday, dress, shave legs, high heels, everything. <laughs> Where'd my mind go? <laughs> Y'all remember church like that. And so, so they came with us to church like that. And I just remember as we were going in, I prayed a prayer like this. Lord, please, please today, would you let the people with the tambourines not come to church? <laughs> Guess what happened that day? They were all there. Every single one of them. 
So we go in and take our seats. I'm thinking if we're back a little ways, all the enthusiastic ones will be up there. It'll happen up there. One comes in and sits down right in front of my dad. One comes in and sits down right beside my dad. One comes in and sits down right behind my dad. My dad was a Korean War veteran. He had a startle reflex that was off the charts. We did not scare my dad playing games in the house. Hide and go seek was what he did not play because he didn't want to get startled. Worship starts. They're all off rhythm. It's just crazy chaos. And my dad is standing the whole time going like this. <laughs> Looking at me going. <clears throat> when we get out of here, boy. When we, boy, when we get out of here. Oh. The point is this. I forgot what it was. <laughs> Tambourines. The point is this. If you want tambourines to be a part of your worship, do it in your car. <laughs> and then see how it goes. Because this isn't talking about all of this happening in here. That's not what Psalm 150 is about. It's talking about all of it happening in here. Let's go on. I think I'm in trouble. Let me, let me just go on. <laughs> worship is our wholehearted response to everything God has revealed about himself. Now let me finish up. I want to answer two questions and then we're going to take some time to worship again. Does worship really matter? What do you think the answer is? I want to show you an Old Testament verse and a New Testament verse that, that communicates that your worship really matters. Isaiah 43, 20 and 21. The wild beasts will honor me, praise me. Jackals, ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. In other words, why aren't you worshiping me? The animals are. All the created order is. I provide for them and I'm providing for you. I give drink to my chosen people. Now look at Isaiah. You need to make note of this. Memorize this. This verse is very important. Isaiah 43, 21. The people who I form for myself that they might, say those next three words, declare my praise. That's why we worship. And yes, it does really matter. Because God gives us the opportunity to do it. Your worship has value and meaning to God. And then James chapter four. Many of you all know this as a spiritual warfare passage. I'm, I'm telling you it's a worship passage. Or do you suppose it is no purpose that the scripture says? Somebody say the scripture. He yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives more grace. Therefore it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. I believe every time you worship it humbles you. And that's, that's part of what God does when you worship. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, look at this. James 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That's talking about more than just a mindset. That's a lifestyle of worship. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Last question of the day is, are you willing to draw near to God? Are you willing to draw near? Would you stand to your feet? We're going to take a few moments to go back into worship and just take a moment and just, just get a song, a psalm, a hymn, a chorus into our hearts to help us have something to worship with all week long. Everybody in favor of that, say amen. amen. We're gonna do it anyway for those of you who didn't say amen. <laughs> I wanna pray for a second and then, we'll, then we're gonna worship again. Father, I wanna thank you for giving me a voice to worship you. I wanna thank you for blessing my friends on the platform today with skills and gifts to help me to worship you. I wanna thank you that you ordained and appointed this moment in time for many to make a recommitment, a recommitment of their faith, for many to draw near, for many to come back home, Lord. I pray that you would let that happen right now as we lift our voices together to magnify you one more time today. In Jesus' name. All right, everybody look this way. Let's God worship. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is in... Come on, you sing. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Come on, let him hear your worship. Our God.
Let's use our hands now. Come on. Let's use our hands and give the Lord an applause. Come on, everybody applauding. Making a joyful noise to you, Lord, for you are worthy. Gracious, mighty God, we love you today. We're applauding your excellence, your greatness, your kindness, your goodness, your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. All right, you may be seated for just a second. May it be that all week long you find yourself singing, our God is an awesome God. One more prayer before we go. And this prayer is for those of you that would say, you know, Jeff, in all honesty, I'm not positive that my sins have been forgiven yet. Matter of fact, I've got doubts. And by the way I've been living, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be with God in his heaven forever. Friend, I wanna help you to understand something. Jesus loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. And he wants to do something for you right now that you can't do for yourself. He wants to forgive your sins, all of them. The question is, is will you let him do it right now? And many of you know deep down, your best efforts to be good aren't cutting it. You know you can't be good enough to be good enough to be with God. Friend, that's why you need a savior. And the good news is, is that Jesus wants to save you right now from the consequences of your sin. So I wanna encourage you to pray a simple prayer with me. I'll lead you through the prayer just like someone led me through one time. And you can pray with me and right now you can meet God in your heart and everything can change for you. Your whole trajectory of life and eternity can change right now. So I wanna invite you to pray with me. Boy or girl, mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, doesn't matter, you pray with me right now. Here we go. Lord Jesus, come on, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I'm choosing to trust in you right now I'm choosing to believe that you're God's son and that when you conquered sin and death and came out of the grave I'm choosing to believe that you did that for me and I'm asking you right now to come into my life to take over my life and to forgive me of all of my sins past present, and future. And Lord, I want you to know, pray this, friend, I want you to know that starting right now, I'm not gonna live my life my way any longer. I'm gonna live the rest of my life with you. And here's the last part of the prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for just now hearing and answering my prayer. And it's in your name that I've prayed. Amen. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, except those of you who just prayed with me. If you just prayed with me, would you look up at me right now? Would you just look up at me and wave at me real big and say, that's me, Jeff. I just prayed with you. Just look up at me and wave at me. Yes, sir. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Yes, sir. Just wave at me. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Just wave at me and say, that's me. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Way to go. Just wave at me until I see anybody else. I'm looking back across. If I miss you, just look up at me and wave at me. Anybody else? God bless you, buddy. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Good. Many of you just prayed. Everyone that just waved at me, would you look back up at me again? Way to go. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited about what you just did. I'd like to start encouraging you and help you to know what to do next. There's a green card right there on the seat pocket in front of you. If you put some contact information on it and drop it in the wooden boxes by the door on the way out, then we can start this week encouraging you and helping you know what to do next. Way to go, everybody. Look this way, friends, if you would. Let's celebrate all of those many who just took a step toward God. 